Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Wee Knives and Ray Laconico Evoke or the Weevoke. As in, uh, I'm going to get my knife reviewing license Weevoked if I keep making corny jokes like this. I'm so sorry about that. Thanks so much to Wee Knives for sending this in for me to take a look at. This knife is available right now. It should be at the time that you're watching it. I'll link it right down below. Uh, it does help my channel when you use my links, but that is entirely up to you. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. And thanks again to my wonderful patrons for supporting me. Let's go ahead and uh, get a measurement of this guy and try and forget that incredibly cringy uh, intro to this video together. Uh, overall length is eight inches. Blade length is coming in at about three and a half, maybe just da, 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 just to hit. No, it's three and a half. Blade length is 3.3, 3.35 inches of blade length. How about some size comparisons? Just a couple up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see here that this is, I would call it a full size knife. It's closer to the size of the Rat 1. Just not, not quite as much presence. Let's go ahead and put it up against the Spyderco. Nah, you know what? We don't need to do that many. Spyderco Para 3 and Demco AD 20.5. And I think one more. Let's go ahead and do the Benchmade bug out. All right. How's the action on this guy? Much like, you know, every wee knife that I handle, um, it's fine right out of the box. It's just a little bit tight, a little bit of encouragement to get it to drop. After a while playing with this thing, fidgeting with it, especially if you drop a little bit of 10 weight nano oil in it, I'm sure it'll be fine. This is a front flipper. Um, it's, it's reasonably easy to, to get at. Uh, the detent is tuned properly to deploy it with both the thumb studs and, you know, uh, the, uh, the front flipper. I think it just needs to break in a little bit. I mean, we knives just kind of, they kind of come tight and then they break in, which honestly is better in my opinion, than a knife coming absolutely drop shut right out of the box. Sure, it's impressive, but what's inevitably going to happen is the thing's going to loosen up and then you're going to have to tighten it up and readjust it again anyway. Knives like this often break in a little bit smoother and they, um, well, they, they break in and then the pivot remains tight is what I'm trying to say. I don't have a problem with this. It's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it's actually a little bit thinner than the Para 3. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see that this guy is really not going to be too difficult to carry at all. It's a little bit longer than the Para 3. Definitely shorter than the PM2. Nowhere near as tall as either. Should be pretty friendly in the pocket. What are we looking at for materials? We are looking at titanium in this case, flamed titanium. And then we have kind of a tumbled DLC CPM 20 CV blade. Uh, let's take a look at the inside. I believe, no, you know what? They did not mill off the inside for weight reduction, not that it needs it. Weight on this guy is coming in at 3.70 ounces, which is pretty darn good. If the blade is three and a half inches long, you know, going by the, the magical ratios of an ounce of a knife for an inch of blade, it's pretty darn close, right? Considering it's full titanium, I really, you know, I can't complain too much. The balance on this, it's a little bit back here, right? The, the handles are much heavier than the scales, but it's not too far outside of the zone where they intend for you to put your index finger. So honestly, when you pick it up, it just doesn't feel like that heavy of a knife. That's good. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Or it's actually the pinned comment. If you guys ever take a look in the comments section, it's the very first comment um, uh, because it's, it's me pinning my own comment. We have a T8 pivot, T8 lock bar insert screw, T8 uh, body screws, T8 pocket clip screws, and there's only two... Uh, body screws, well, there's 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 actually um, one of the body screws on this side is part of the pocket clip, which is fine. Minimal hardware, very easy to take apart. That's typical Wii. I don't have a problem with that at all. All right, last thing we need to do before we talk about the knife is measure the blade stock thickness, which I 
would venture to guess is probably like 115 to 120 thousandths. A little more. This is 123, 120. Oh, we're, we're bumping up. It's 125 thousandths is what it is. That's pretty standard. All right. So um, <laughs> we have a Ray Laconico Wii knife. Uh, we've seen this before, the Esprit, and I'm sure some other models. Um, it's kind of, you know, the design language goes hand in hand. Ray Laconico likes to make some really streamlined, minimalist aesthetic knives, and we certainly has found their safety zone in designs that are a lot like Ray Laconico's. This is very much the same thing. Um, this is a very, you know, we're going to get the... <laughs> We're gonna get people screaming. That's a bit. They copied the bug out. They copied the completely original design that is the bug out. The bug out surely was the first to use these lines, right? Um, yeah, you're gonna, we're gonna get that. Um, it's a generic knife profile. We got a billion of these, and a billion of them existed before the bug out, right? Before Benchmade put an axis lock on the most generic design profile of all time. Um, but it is it is an incredible. I mean, it's a folding steak knife, right? That's what this is. The handle is fine. It's easy to hang on to, and you know what? Hallelujah! They actually put a milled clip on this. Very straightforward popsicle stick style clip, but that's fine. Milled clip, nonetheless, really great. I gotta say, the combination of the flamed tie, the bronze hardware, it looks nice, right? It looks classy. The black blade, the bronze, and the flame looks nice. You don't have to get this version is actually slightly more expensive than the base version. Um, I think it's like ten bucks more, right? Um, but uh, it does look good. It is the only thing saving it from an otherwise incredibly boring aesthetic. I've said this uh, about a thousand times. If you're gonna go with this, we knives for the love of God, start texturing these things. Uh, this plain flat titanium look is. Man, you have you have a lot of those. You got a lot. Just putting it lightly. You have like most of the line that is available is just flat titanium. Something else here, right? And I know Ray Laconico designed this. Um, may, you know, maybe in this case I should be uh, suggesting to Ray when we do these production. And I, I don't want to tell him how to do his thing, right? It's obviously successful. And we knives again doing just fine without me telling them what to do. But uh, man, this would um, this would really I, th I think class it up. Uh, just just adding a little bit of character without risking you know uh, people not liking it. A, a little bit of texture. Mill a spot out in the middle of this that where you can add some texture or do a continuous pattern all the way across. It just makes it look a little nicer. It makes it look like there's a little bit more effort. The flamed titanium is nice, but if you look at the most generic version of this, the plain version that's just titanium, boy, is it plain. I mean, it is beyond plain. The plainest plain that has ever planed. Plain! Something different, please. It's fine. This works. The thumb stud is in the right place. It's easy to disengage the lock bar, right? It's easy to front flip, etc., etc. Holding this knife and using it in a variety of different hand positions is all going to work, right? I mean, this is these are classic knife uh, lines. They're they're um, you know they've been proven to work since we figured out that rocks can be sharp and can cut things, right? Um, it, it's fine, but uh, my God, is this boring? It is just very boring. Um, the blade profile is a drop point blade with a large swedge. There's a flat that carries out maybe 50% the length of the blade. It looks nice. It will function. We have a nice tip. We have a reasonably thin edge. No billboarding whatsoever except for the Arla Conico on this side, which is fine. It is otherwise the same as an enormous amount of stuff out there. The edge is sharpened very well. We Knives knows how to sharpen a blade. Still a little bit lacking, I think, when it comes to specifically heat treating CPM 20 CV. I know that their range, like many companies out there from many different countries of origin, their range is 59 to 61. We got to get up. We got to get that up to uh, 60 to 62. Uh, when it comes to M390 slash 20 CV slash 204 P, it is just my opinion, but it is my opinion that uh, this composition should be uh, at the lowest 60 
And, uh, you know, I mean, for a production, right? If you're talking about a custom knife, okay, fine. Then they can get it absolutely optimal. But when we're talking about a production knife, right, these mass mass production knives, um, 60 to 62, uh, it's even worse on the uh, DLC versions of this. Yeah, it's cool. Black Blade, right? Uh, the range changes from 58 to 60, I believe, unless they have very recent. I just looked at it like two days ago. Um, but uh, 58, that's too, you're, you're losing the benefit entirely, right? And people will always argue, oh, well, what, what, it, what it does is it makes it easier to sharpen. Right, but that's the same with any steel. The composition and the benefit of any individual composition, right, it, it has a different balance. So you're not just bang, weighing out like ease of sharpening. You're weighing out, you know, how easy it is to sharpen versus how long it will hold an edge, right? That combined with the potential corrosion resistance for that composition, right? And then the balance of toughness as you increase the hardness, right? So uh, there, it's not like, you know, oh, well, it's just you're just getting, you know, it's more beneficial to people who uh, want to have 20 CV but make it easier to sharpen. Okay, but then that balance, the benefit of the balance it drops off and you have uh, way more, uh, you know, uh, compositions that are substantially less expensive um, that will do literally exactly the same thing. So by optimizing CPM 20 CV, you are getting the best benefit of that balance, even if you do not plan to use it uh, for its intended purpose, right? You buy a car with 500 horsepower, it better be producing 500 horsepower, right? I understand to the ground is different, right? But if I buy a Hellcat and I flip the hood up and find out it's got a Honda Civic engine in it, I'm going to be kind of upset, right? Oh, you get better gas mileage. I don't care about the fuel economy. I bought a Hellcat, right? I mean, that's that's one of those things. <laughs> Getting real heated here. It's just my opinion. Not a metallurgist. I don't heat treat blades, right? I'm just a guy who reads on Google, watches knife reviews, and handles a lot of knives. Uh, but I think that that should be increased. That's just my opinion. Anyways. <laughs> wow. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the thumb studs are located in an optimal position for deployment, and they manage to stay out of the cutting path. So that's nice. I appreciate that. The knife has excellent fit and finish, but that we've come to expect that from we, right? This is just standard. It's just, it should be perfect, and it is. Um, I like the look of the hardware. I like that it is recessed and flat. It looks nice. We have a backspacer back here. We have a lanyard pin, which is excellent. We don't have a big stupid hole in the knife that 99.9% .9 of the people who pick this up will not use anyway. So this is great. Lanyard people, you can attach those lanyard thingies to the knife, and for the rest of us, we don't have to worry about it. Carry depth is about right here. I think that's great. Uh, the uh, ramp underneath the clip is excellent. In fact, I mean, the pocket clip... It, it is very basic, but it does go with the design. I mean, credit where credit is due. No hot spots or anything like that, right? It's easy to hang on to despite, you know, it being really thin. There is a, a lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop, which is, again, what we expect. We have a stop pin located in its traditional position right back here. No shouldering, but we don't need it. The knife does run on bearings. Yep, it runs on bearings. Sorry, I just had to check. The issue is that sometimes I see the edges here and I think I'm sure that it's bearings, but you know, I'm not really sure, right? And so on a knife like this where everything is so thin and I can't see the little edges of the ball bearings, then I'd rather take it apart and make sure and give you guys the right information. Sometimes we will throw us a curveball, right? Um, and lots of different companies where you expect to see bearings or it feels very similar to bearing action, you find out it's actually washers, so I don't want to get that wrong. So anyways, yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely running on bearings. Uh, no blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick. No pivot lash. Consistent action. It's still a little bit tight. This thing came back together exactly the way that it was before I, you know, un just undid the top uh, scale there. Nice detent. Really, Wee does a good job with their detents. And I got the centering back perfectly. No detent lash either. Okay, so this knife comes in at $219. We are looking at Chinese manufacturing, premium Chinese manufacturing, though this is absolutely not the same thing that you get uh, from the Walmart display where it says made in China and it's like, you know, $30. It's very different, totally, totally different caliber of knife. Um, we have uh, fantastic fit and finish. We have some nice decorative hardware. 
Um, we have, well, functional, but it, it's nice that they, you know, did the bronze finish. Um, we have, you know, some good looking scales, good looking blade to um, handle finish contrast, reasonably good ergonomics, easy manipulation. We have a um, full titanium backspacer. We have a milled titanium pocket clip, CPM 20 CV, etc. Both on paper and, you know, in physical form, this thing is hitting the mark. Uh, I think that $219, which is what this comes in at, is a reasonable price. I am unimaginably bored with this design. Um, a little bit of texturing, a little bit of character goes a long way. This is one of those knives that is destined to be forgotten amidst a sea of other knives that are exactly the same. You didn't say the same thing about the Esprit. That thing was very simple aesthetically, and it was one of your favorite knives during that year. Yes, but if you remember, what they decided to do on that particular knife was do orange peel texturing, which is something that we don't see at all. It was beautiful, and it, it accented that, you know, that simple aesthetic perfectly. It was really, really good. It was a nice touch, a nice, you know, not completely unique. There are other knives that have that texture, right? But much more unique versus other things in their line. This is fine. If you like the look of it, I mean, it's right there. It's, you know, it's a, it's a decent value. Uh, it's made well. Not really happy with their heat treat uh, range. They really need to get that higher, right? And not increase the price tag. It's not like, okay, we'll give you a higher, you know, range, Right, but but we're gonna in increase the price. Um, I'm pretty sure Bowler, Carpenter, and Crucible all have their optimal ranges. Like, hey, this is where it should be. And unless I don't know how numbers work, it doesn't look like this is hitting that mark. Um, at least not on the low end, right? So that needs to be higher across the board. Uh, with with we knives use it. or I mean the other answer is stop using CPM twenty CV and use something else. Use something that is optimized, right? Uh, at a lower Rockwell, if you're just wanting to hit that range, which it, it kind of looks like they just whatever steel they use, it seems like, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but it seems like they're like yeah fifty nine to sixty one, right? Um, then use a steel that is more optimized within that range. So that people are getting their, their money's worth out of it, right? Again, whether they are actually using it in a way that accentuates that uh, optimized range, right? Um, whether they're using it that way or not, it, it should be, right? It's on, on principle, it should be. This is fine. It's uh, honestly, even with it being a reasonable value and a, a reasonable um, design and functional, blah, 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 it's great. If that's all you needed to know, then there you go. Buy this. You're going to be really happy with it. I'm having a hard time telling people to rush out and buy this, though. I'm having a hard time honestly saying this is something I recommend. You should absolutely be going out of your way to pick this up over other knives, right? If all you're looking for is, you know, if, if you're... If you look, if you took all the, the bullet points from this, the, the nice things that I said, the good things that I said, and you're like, this is what I'm looking for, then like I said, buy it. You're going to be happy with it. Outside of that, though, this knife has so much competition. There are so many other more interesting things out there that will do exactly the same thing that just have more character. And in, all, and in many cases, they actually cost less money, right? Um, so, yeah, it's a knife. There it is. Uh, I've seen lots of knives like this. I like Ray Laconico. He's, he's put out some really cool designs. And like I said, the Wii Esprit was one of my favorite knives uh, that Wii has ever done. Uh, this just is, this is just really plain. And it's not, not really my cup of tea. But, you know, you can like it. Sure. This is upside down. Please. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.